Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I've got my green apron on, so you know what that means. It's time for some XC250 maintenance. To be completely honest, I don't know if my spark plug's ever been replaced. My bike's at 13,000 miles right now, and if we crack open our factory service manual under periodic maintenance, it says that our spark plug should have been replaced at uh, 7,000 miles and 13,000 miles. So I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Let me turn this down a little bit. So here we go, in our factory service manual, it says our spark plug should have been replaced right there, and it should have been replaced right there. I can't even tell you if it was replaced right there at the uh, 7,000 mile mark. I know I didn't do it, so I mean, I guess we can assume it's never been done. So the area that we're going to be working on our bike is on the clutch side of the bike. Uh, specifically right in this area right here. So what this is, this is our spark plug wire. What this does is it moves from our ignition coil to our spark plug, uh, which is nestled underneath this, this uh, cap right here. We don't need a ton of tools for this project, but once again, we're gonna go ahead and work from the uh, periodic maintenance section of our factory service manual. If you don't have one, I highly recommend that you do buy one. Um, because they're uh, incredibly useful. Uh, some other things that we're going to need are we're going to need a new spark plug, we're going to need some feeler gauges, and we're going to need a way to remove our spark plug. So I have my uh, factory spark plug socket and the factory wrench for the spark plug socket. Since we're going to be working on some components that are really close to the engine, they're actually critical engine components, we're going to make sure that the bike is cool before we actually start working in there, just because we don't want to get burned. Since we're going to be working uh, in an area where debris can actually get into the engine, we're going to want to keep this area as clean as possible throughout the entire process. We're going to start by using an air compressor uh, to actually blow off this area right here, just so no dirt or debris ends up into our cylinder. So now that we did that preliminary blow off, what we can do is we can remove our uh, spark plug wire, or spark plug connector essentially, and uh, gain access to our spark plug. And simply, um, all you have to do is really pull on this spark plug outwards and it, it should really just pop out. Spark plug wires are held on by typically a spring or a brass connector or a copper connector that crimps onto the top of the spark plug. So we're gonna go ahead and tuck this out of the way and we should have access to our spark plug now. Now that we have our spark plug connector removed, uh, we should be using the air compressor again to blow off any residual dirt or debris that might have gotten knocked off as we pull that spark plug wire off. As you can see, my spark plug is pretty rusty in there, so uh, it might take a little bit of persuasion to get out. <laughs> So I'm gonna be using the factory tools that Yamaha actually provides in the onboard toolkit to remove the spark plug, just to see um, if they actually work well and are usable in a trail side situation. So we go ahead and put the big end on the spark plug, and then we use the 19 side of the wrench to pop this guy off. So we wanna make sure everything's seated on there, and there we go, she just loosened really easily. So. I mean, I was probably losing compression, uh, <laughs> to be honest, but that's why we want to check these things uh, periodically. Um, but now that I have it loose, what I can do is spin it off by hand, and it should just pull right out as soon as it's all the way threaded out. And there she is. Oh my goodness. That is horrible. It's bad guys. So this is pretty much what you don't want to see is a, a rusty uh, spark plug and also a rusty crush washer. 
So now that we have that old spark plug out, we need to prep our new spark plug to actually get ready to go into the bike. But first, I'm gonna show you the differences between a used spark plug and a new spark plug versus what they should look like. So this is an NGK factory uh, part, factory replacement part. Um, its part number is right there. There it is, 7839DR7EA. That's a replacement spark plug for this one right here still has the same stamping on there as well. So the way spark plugs come from the factory is they come with a little protector that protects the actual threads and the uh, the point on there. But there you go, there's the difference between the old one and the new one. So now that we have our new spark plug actually unwrapped, what we have to do is we have to set the gap or at least check the gap on the spark plug. So essentially what happens with the spark plug is there's two electrodes. There's one right there and then there's one right here. So the center electrode is the one that's actually in the very center of the spark plug. And this outside one right here is called the ground electrode. When the bike is firing, a spark actually jumps from electrode to electrode. If this, this gap right here is not correct, you might not be getting the proper performance um, out of your spark plug. So in order to set this gap, we'll need some special tools. Our factory service manual calls for us to use a wire thickness gauge, but I only have the flat feeler gauges, so I'm just gonna be using that one. Uh, and our spark plug gap should be 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters. So essentially that gap is the distance between the ground electrode and the center electrode. So that 0.6 to 0.7 millimeter gap um, can be calibrated using what are called feeler gauges. So these are the flat kind. Essentially they're calibrated or very, very specific thicknesses um, that can be used to uh, inspect a piece of, of tooling or machinery. In this case, we're gonna be checking our the gap on that spark plug. So our factory service manual said to be in spec, our gap has to be somewhere between 0.6 and 0.7 millimeters. So what that means is this one should not fit in between our spark plug electrodes and this one should be able to slip out easily. So we'll go ahead and check that. So with the 0.6, this one should just be able to slip in and out pretty easily. And yes, it does. There's almost no bite to that one. And moving on to the 0.7 one, it can't even fit in there. So, I mean, I guess you could say that's properly gapped right out of the box. And we're just gonna try the 0.65. This is somewhere in between, so we should be able to fit this in and it should be able to grab a little bit. So there you go. So it slides in, but it doesn't very easily slide out. So that means this is right around a 0.65 millimeter gap. Um, if we were to adjust this, what we would need to do is either press the ground electrode closer or spread the ground electrode out using some sort of tool. We wanna make sure that we don't damage either electrode because they're very important in making sure our bike runs properly. So since I'm in my garage and I have access to a torque wrench, I'm gonna to torque the spark plug in to 13 foot pounds, which is what our factory service manual recommends. But however, if we're doing this as a trail side repair, you wanna make sure it's tight, but you don't wanna over tighten it. Now that we have our spark plug gapped, what we can do is just thread it on into our cylinder head. So we wanna make sure that we don't damage any of the threads and we don't cross thread this in. So Really, it pays to be patient with this part, uh, just to make sure you're catching the right threads and you're catching them at the right angle. Now that it's bottomed out using just our fingertips, now we can go ahead and use our torque wrench with the appropriate size and depth socket. So we're just gonna get it snug and then wait for that 13 foot pound click. And there it is, 13 foot pounds. 
When it comes to servicing your spark plug wire set, some people say that you should use a um, some sort of dielectric grease or uh, anti-seize grease. Um, it actually on the inside and on the tip of your spark plug just so you don't get any rust or fouling on there and you make sure that there's a, a proper electrical connection there. Um, I haven't had any problems with misfiring so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and plug this back onto the top of my spark plug. And you can actually hear uh, when you're seated all the way because the spark plug has threads on top of it and the spring inside of our spark plug wire actually slides past those threads. So if you listen carefully, you can hear it snap on. And at that point, you're pretty much done. You've successfully changed your, your spark plug on your um, Yamaha XT250, or at least that's how I do it. And speaking of changing parts on your bike, this meant this video is meant to be uh, as entertainment only. If you use it as a guide, just know that, hey, I'm not liable for any damage that occurs when you're messing with your bike. Because if you're messing with your bike, you should know what you're doing and you should do the proper research and have the proper tools and know-how of how to do the project that you're doing. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and until next time, peace out.